Hello, welcome to the first lesson. Well, Dummer uses the Dravidian script. It comprises of 13 vowels and 24 consonants. In addition, additional letters are formed by combining consonants with vowels, which we'll cover in more detail later. So these are the vowels. I'll go through the pronunciation of each one, one by one. These are broken up into three columns. The leftmost column shows the vowel written using the Dravidian script. The middle column shows the transliteration of the vowel sound using our transliteration scheme. And the right column shows the closest approximation of the vowel sound using an English word. So the first vowel is uh. It's pronounced like the short U sound in cup. Uh. Uh. The next vowel is ah, it's pronounced like the short o sound in box, ah. So these first two vowels are a pair, uh, ah, short and long. <clears throat> As you can see, they're also written uh, very similarly. The next vowel is e, like in the word keep, if you were to pronounce it short, like keep, e, e, keep. Followed by E, if you were to pronounce keep uh, longer. E, E, so E, E, short and long. E, E, so these two are also a pair. Make sure when pronouncing these not to add a Y sound at the end of it. So it's not pronounced E with a Y. E, this is a very American tendency. Um, make sure it just stops with the E and E, E. It's not E and E with the Y at the end. It's just E and E. The next vowel is O, like the short double O sound in book, O, followed by O, like the long double O sound in root, O. Be sure also here not to add the W sound at the end, making it ooh and ooh. It's just ooh and ooh. The next vowel is e, like in the word bet, e, followed by e, like a long pronunciation of the word bay, e. But be sure here also not to add the Y sound at the end, making it a. E. It's simply e. So e, e. So these are the first four vowel pairs. And then this is, the next one is I, like in the word Mike, I, I. Uh, this vowel doesn't have a pair. <clears throat> the next vowel is O, like a short pronunciation of the word To, O, O. But also be here not to add a W sound at the end, making it O. Uh, and the next vowel is O, the longer variation, also pronounced like the word toe, except a long, drawn out pronunciation. Toe, O, so O, O, being sure not to add the W sound at the end. O, O. This next vowel is pronounced O. It's similar to the pronunciation of the word goat. O, O, it doesn't have an exact uh, conjugate in, in the English language. Goat is just an approximation. Uh, it's pronounced O. O. And the last vowel is UK. Um, it's not used by itself, uh, usually. It's used most often in combination with a consonant to stop the sound of the consonant, which we'll talk about in more detail later. So these are the first four consonants. We'll just go through the pronunciation one by one. The first consonant is K. It has four varieties, numbered one, two, three, and four. The first K is pronounced K, as in the word cat, the hard C sound. K, K. The second one is 
a more aspirated version of the hard C sound. It sounds like K, K. It's harder and more aspirated. K, K. The third variety is a G sound, a hard G sound, like in the word got. G, G, G. And the last variety is an aspirated G sound. It sounds like G, G, G. So those are the four varieties of cup. And in reading, in this course, we'll number the ka so you'll know which pronunciation to use. The next consonant is nga. It has the ng sound like in the at the end of the word bang. Nga nga nga. The next consonant is cha. It also has four varieties. The first is cha, like in the word chat. The next is also a more aspirated version of cha. It's cha, cha. It's harder. Cha, cha. The third variety is a J sound, like in the word jug, j, j. And the fourth is a more aspirated version of j, j, j. The next consonant is nya. It has the n y a sound nya, like in onion. Onion, the nya, nya. Okay, so the next consonant is ta. It's pronounced similarly to the t in the word tax, except the tongue is a little further back on the roof of the mouth. So instead of ta, ta, where the tongue is slightly behind the front teeth, it's even further back, so it becomes ta, ta. Ta, ta, as opposed to ta. The second variety is ta. It's a stronger, more aspirated version. Ta. The third variety is the D sound, like in the word dog. Da, da. And the fourth variety is a more aspirated version of the D sound. Da, da. The next consonant is pronounced na. It's similar to the pronunciation of the word nut, except that the tongue is further back on the roof of the mouth. So in pronouncing the word nut, the tongue is a little behind the front teeth, but when pronouncing na, the tongue has to come a lot further back on the roof of the mouth to get the hard na sound. So it's pronounced na. The next letter is th. It also has four varieties. The first one is th, as in the word thing, th, th. The second is a harder version of the first, th, th, th. The third is a the, the sound, like in the word this, the. And the fourth is an aspirated version of the third, the, the. The next letter is na, and it's pronounced exactly the same as the n in the word nut. Na. The next consonant is pa. It also has four varieties. The first being pa, as in the word pan. Pa. The second variety is a harder version, more aspirated version. Pa. Pa. The third is a B sound, like in the word box, B, B, and the fourth is an aspirated version of the B sound, B, B. The next consonant is ma, as in the word mat, ma. Next is ya, like in the word yak, ya. The next is r, and this is a rolled R. It's a r sound, r. Next is la, like in the word lap, la. Next is va, it's the v sound, like in the word vacuum, va.
The next letter is R. R. It's similar to the way we say R in the word rat, except the tongue is further back. R. R. And the transliteration is irregular for this consonant. It's Z H A. It's pronounced R. R. And to get that, put your tongue far back and it's similar to pronouncing the word rat, the R sound in rat, except r, r, the tongue is further back. The next consonant is la, it's an L sound, like in the word lap, except the tongue is further back on the roof of the mouth, so it's la, la. The next letter is r, it's similar to the the r before except it's stronger it's a uh, more uh, it's harder and it's also rolled so it's r r the next letter is na and if you remember there was a na before and there's no difference in the pronunciation between these two nas there's only a difference in when it's used in writing and reading which we'll discuss later but it's pronounced exactly like the N sound in the word nut. The next consonant is J, pronounced like the J sound in jar. J, followed by S, which is the S sound in the word sack. The next consonant is SH, like the SH sound in shut. Next consonant is H like the H sound in hat. And the final consonant is ksh, a K-S-H sound, ksh, like in the word fracture, ksh. So in addition to the consonants we just covered, other consonants are formed by combining those first consonants that we saw with the vowel sounds. So if you see here, the top uh, uses the Dravidian script and the bottom uses the transliterated script. Uh, if we use the first consonant, k, and we combine it with each of the vowel sounds, you get, uh, you get different consonants. So for example, k combined with a uh gives you k, which is the starting sound. K combined with a uh gives you ka. Then K with E gives you ki, and likewise for E, ki, u becomes ku, u becomes ku, e becomes ke, e becomes ke, ai becomes kai, o becomes o, ko, o becomes ko, au becomes kau, and ka combined with Uk, the the three dots becomes k. it's it's a, uh, it stops the sound of the k and it's just a k sound now if you'll notice to create these other consonants which come from combining k with the vowels there are additional um, strokes added to k uh, for example <coughs> ka has an extra character added, ki has kind of like a ponytail added to it, so we'll talk about these uh, in the next slide. So these additions to the letter are called diacritics, and uh, here's a chart of the different diacritics. Uh, when a consonant is combined with a, uh, it's, it's just the normal uh, consonant. When it's combined with a, uh, you have to add that other character to the right of the consonant. When it's combined with e, you add sort of a, a, a ponytail to it. When it's combined with e, you add sort of a ponytail with a curl at the end. When it's combined with u, um, u and u are irregular, so there are four different types of diacritics that the consonant could take, which we'll see later. When a consonant is combined with e, you add um, that symbol to the left of it, before it, 
Uh, likewise with A, you add uh, that symbol before it. Kind of looks like a telephone. <clears throat> when it's combined with I, you add uh, the I symbol before it. When it's combined with O, you add the A symbol before it and the A symbol after it. So the consonant is sandwiched in the middle of uh, those two other characters. Uh, similarly to the O, which is the A uh, diacritic on the left and the A diacritic on the right. So again, the consonant is sandwiched in between. And then the same happens for O, where <coughs> it's sandwiched in between the A diacritic and the consonant LA. And then, um, so here we have a chart which lists all the different consonants and vowels and all the derived consonants which are formed by combining the consonants with the vowels. Um, <clears throat> so they're listed in a grid fashion and this is a very useful tool when first learning the alphabet um, to practice uh, writing and to practice uh, saying the consonants it's useful to say them um, pick a consonant and then say all the variations like start with ka and go ka ka ki ki ku ku ke ke kai ko ko kao uk uh, so doing that is a useful exercise to <coughs> practice saying all the different letters and here also you can see all the different diacritic marks uh, I mentioned before the diacritics for u and u have four different variations so you can see that in columns five and six how different letters take on different diacritics for u and u and this is the transliterated version of the chart if um, your goal is not to learn the alphabet or to read and write simply if your goal is simply to speak then using this chart will help you learn the sounds of thumber without having to go through the time uh, to learn the actual letters that are used.